And boys and assembled company, welcome to Friday at the World Storytelling Cafe. And because it's Friday, we have stories for children. And tonight, we or today, if you're sitting over in the States where it's about midday, we have a very special guest. We have all the way from Texas. She's got here on Ollie's magic carpet. Hello, Louie. How are you? We, I, I brought you someone from Texas tonight, Louie. Hold on. I, I brought you someone from Texas tonight, Louie. Are you happy with that? I am indeed. Yes, indeed. So we have, can you please put your hands together and welcome Amy Bloomer-Bruder. Over to you, Amy. The stage is yours. Shokma, hello. Sahaja Fuat, Amy Bruton Blumel, Chikasha Saya. My name is Amy, and I'm a member of the Chickasaw Nation. And I travel all over, and now I'm traveling by Zoom um, to educate about Southeastern people and our traditions, our customs, our cultures. Um, and I thought about things to share today, and I want to do stories about gifts. Um, the gifts we're given, the gifts we're born with. Uh, the gifts we don't recognize. And so um, I'd like to start with really um, one of my favorite stories. Um, I was so, in, and this is one of my favorite about Chokwahili. Now Chokwahili is the possum. And when Abba Banili, when creator made the world and he made all of the animals and all of the creatures, each creature got a very special gift, a gift that no other creature had, a gift that was just their own. And so for, for animals like Chopfi, the rabbit, he got really long ears. Now for Isi, the deer, he got long legs for speed. Nita, the bear, he got size and strength. Uh, Luxi, the turtle, he got a shell so that he would never have a, a, a place that wasn't home. He would always have a home with him. Uh, and Chokwahili, uh, the possum, got the most beautiful tail in the entire world. I mean, it was fabulous. It was beautiful and long and silky and luxurious. And he adored his gift. He adored his gift so much that he wouldn't let it touch the ground. He carried it over his shoulder and he told everyone, isn't this beautiful? Look at my tail. Have you seen my tail? My tail is fantastic. If he went to a hitla, to a dance or a gathering with all of the other creatures, he would make them hold his tail. He would wrap the tail around them and explain how beautiful their tail was. Now, eventually the other animals became very tired of the bragging and they, they, they just couldn't stand it. And when they thought it couldn't get any worse, he upped it. He, uh, he began to not only brag about his gift, but he began to point out the problems with everyone else's gifts. He said to Issy, he said, I know you're fast, but your legs, they look like sticks. They're so skinny. For Chukfi, the rabbit, he said, you know, you just look silly with ears that long. For Bear, he said, you may be big and strong, but your tail, have you seen your tail? <laughs> I mean, it's this big. My tail is beautiful, and your tail, this big. He looked at Corny the skunk, and he said, you know, you have a gift, and you just stink. And all the other animals began to question their own gifts, and they began to feel bad about what creator, what Abba Banili had provided. And so it ended up that they heard him so much and he followed them and bothered them so much that they made a plan that the next gathering, the next get together, they would swim across the, the big water. They would swim across the Misa Sapokni. Now, when the Europeans and the Spaniards came and they asked my people, what do you call this river? We said Misa Sapokni. Sapokni means old, and if you say Misa Sapokni, it literally means older than time or without beginning. And they said, Mississippi, 
and it became Mississippi ever since. But my people, the animals, the creatures, they swam across the Misasapokni. Now, as they were swimming across, Chukwahili saw them leaving, and he's running back and forth down the bank screaming, what about me? What about, hey, hey, you can't have a dance without me. What about me and my tail? You need us, hey. But the animals knew he wouldn't get in the water. He wouldn't risk getting that tail wet. So they kept swimming. They just swam and ignored him. And he screamed and stomped his feet and he threw a huge fit. But the animals kept swimming. Now, as Chukwahili was running up and down the banks, he bumped into the king of the Misasa, the snapping turtle, the biggest turtle you've ever seen, lay sleeping on the banks, no sea. He was sound asleep. And Chukwi walked up and he poked him and he said, hey, hey, Minko. And the Minko opened one eye and he said, Nanta, Nanta Chibana, what do you want? And Chukwahili said, well, I want to ride. If I could stand on your back and you could swim me across the Misa Sapokni, I could go to the dance. And the Minko said, Kio, no, I, no. But Chokwahili begged and begged. And finally, Minko said, well, what's in it for me? Chokwahili said, what do you want? And the Minko said, I want a tail just like yours. I want the most beautiful tail in the world. Chokwahili said, no problem, no problem. I'll get you a tail just like mine. He got onto Minko's back and Minko began to swim across the Misa Sapokni. Now about halfway across, Chukwahili said, you know, if you want a tail like mine, you're going to have to wait because there's medicine that has to be done. I'm going to have to go find the tail. There's just things I have. I don't have it in my pocket. You can wait. Minko agreed. He took Chukwahili across and dumped him on the other shore. And Chukwahili came into the dance, the kitla, the gathering, yelling, I'm here. And everyone was so glad to see him. They were so irritated that the Minko had brought him. Now, this happened every time they had a gathering. The creatures would swim across the river, hoping that Chokwahili would not come. But every time, Minko would carry him. And every time, about halfway across the water, Chokwahili would say, well, I didn't have time to get your tail this, this time. I, I, I need certain herbs. There's certain things that I need to do. There's medicine, but it's not that time of year. So you're going to have to wait. And every time Miko waited and waited, and he would drop the possum off onto the shore and the possum would join the other animals. Now, finally, the animals came to Minko and they said, Nanta, what are you doing? Why do you keep bringing him to us? We don't want him. And Miko said, well, he's going to give me a take. And the animals looked at him and said, Kio, Abba Banili, no, only creator gives out gifts. He can't give you a gift. But Minko was adamant. He said, no, he said he would give me a tail and I will get a tail. And the animals shook their heads, knowing that only Abba Banili could give anyone a tail. Well, the next dance, Chokwahili shows up and he's proud and he taps on Minko's shell and he says, let's go, aya. And the Minko looked at him and he said, do I get my tail? Do I get my tail today, tonight, this minute? I want my tail. Chokwahili said, of course, of course, after the dance, I'll give you your tail. It's, It's no big deal. He climbed onto the Minko's back, onto the hard shell, and Minko began to swim. And about halfway across the Misa Sapo, Chokwahili said, now, you know, if I give you a tail tonight, it won't be nearly as splendid as mine. I mean, I'm not through making it. So you can have it, but it's kind of scraggly. And I, I, you really don't want this tail. So let's wait until next dance. And the Minko got so angry that he began to sink into the oka, into the water. 
And as he sunk down, Possum began to feel the water coming up his legs and he began to panic. And he grabbed his tail with one foot and he began to try to swim, holding his tail out of the water. But of course, eventually the water swallowed him and his tail up. And when he came out, he was soaking wet and he poked his little head above the water. And Minko looked at him and said, do I get my tail? Possum said, he, oh, no, I will never, never give you a tail because you got mine wet. And at that point, Minko opened his mouth and he snapped onto the possum's tail and he wouldn't let go. Now, a possum had to swim the last half of the Misa Sapokni, dragging the largest snapping turtle you've ever seen that ever was. And when they got to the shore, the snapping turtle planted his feet and Chokwahili, the possum, planted his feet and they began to go back and forth and back and forth and they pulled. And each time the turtle would pull, that tail would slip and it would slip a little bit more and the possum would pull and Luxi would pull and they would pull and eventually the tail popped right off. And the Minko got his tail and he took it to the bottom of the Misa Sapukni. Now, Chokwahili turned and he looked at where his tail had been. And all that was left was a pink, scraggly tail. Looked kind of like a rat's tail. It had about eight little gray hairs poking out of it. He was, he, he was so astonished and saddened and shocked. He began to walk into the dance grounds. And he looked at all of the other animals that had gathered and they began to giggle. They began to laugh. Pretty soon they were rolling on the ground, pointing at the tail. And they said to Chokwahili, they said, oh, that is a beautiful tail. Don't let that get dirty. And Chokwahili was so embarrassed and upset. He looked at them and he kind of gave, you know, that grin you give when you're uncomfortable. He kind of grinned. And that sent the animals into just hysterics and bear laid on his back and kicked up dirt and the deer fell over. They laughed and laughed, laughing at this poor possum with the world's most beautiful tail. Now, possum felt so bad, he began to head for the woods and the laughter got louder and he's got right to the edge. He turned and he looked at all the animals and he gave them a big grin, hoping they would feel sorry for him, but they laughed harder. To this day, when you see Chokwahili, a little scraggly tail, and that is how Possum got his tail. Okay, now that was fantastic, Amy. Could you could you do the last line again because you kind of froze? Oh, right before he entered into the woods. He was so embarrassed that when he, he did like that, his face kind of froze up. And to this day, when you see Chokwahili, you only see him at night. And when he looks at you, he'll go, because he wants you to feel sorry for him and his poor, ugly little tail. And that is how possible that is too. Is that better? That we, got, we got the whole thing there. I must admit that I... I, I caught a possum in the headlights down uh, out and out near uh near stone stonewall and i it was the ugliest creature i've ever seen in all of my life <laughs> i just wonder what this creature was just staring at me from the side of the road <laughs> and he's our only marsupial possums are the only marsupials that we have in north america so they're ugly and fascinating at the same time to me. It's like they're really a strange combination. Oh, that, that was a strange creature. Mm -hmm. Lee, did you like that story? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad, Lee. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, right. Have you got another one for us? Yeah, let's see. Um, this is another one um, about Kony. Um you know, we have different variants and different stories about how different gifts came and why. And in the beginning, the creatures 
the animals, they weren't what they are today necessarily. Some of them looked totally different. They were totally different than what you would expect or what you think of when you, when you think of them now. And one of the creatures that was extremely different was Kony the skunk. Now, Kony, he was as big as an elephant. He was huge. He was monstrous. And his coat, he had the beautiful black and white coat, but he was quite the creature to behold. He was almost like a woolly mammoth. He was so big. And he, for as big as he was, he was such a gentle soul. He never bothered anyone. He spent his days foraging, just looking for little berries and, and, and grasses and things like that. Total vegetarian, just a happy little guy going about his business, but not a little guy, a happy, huge guy, I should say. So as he went about his day and the other animals bumped into him and saw him, one animal became extremely jealous extremely jealous of this coat and they began to obsess about the beautiful black and white coat and they began to wish that they had a black and white coat and the animal I'm talking about is Chola Homa. Now Chola Homa is the red fox and he began to watch this skunk and every day the hunger in his heart just grew and grew and he began to obsess as to how could I get that black coat? How could I, I steal the black coat? Well, he's awfully big. I don't think I can overpower him. I don't know how to do this. And he spent weeks focused on this, this gift that was not his. And eventually he went to the villages and he went to the, to the hot talk, to people. And he found a medicine person. And he said to the medicine person, he was like, listen, I really want the black and white coat. The Losa told me the beautiful black and white. I want this coat. And I, I think you can help me get it. And the medicine person explained to him, no, 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 no. It's a bad idea to try to change gifts. You were given a gift for a reason. You, you can't change gifts like you change clothes or, or homes. You have to keep what you're given. There's a reason that you have it. But Chola Homa was obsessed and he was like, no, that's not the answer. I know better than creator. I am going to get that black and white coat. If it kills me, I'll do anything I can. So he began to stalk the black and white skunk and watch him. And then he got, he got even more set out on how to get it. So he went to a different village. And he went from village to village to village, talking to different people and talking to different medicine people until finally he met one medicine man who said, I can help you and I will. And he provided medicine. He did the things necessary so that Chola Homa could steal the gift from the skunk from Koni. Now, Chola Homa went back and he began to watch Kony and a strange thing began to happen when the medicine took effect. Kony began to shrink. He began to get smaller. And at first he, he thought he noticed it, but was he really getting smaller? And then he went to bed and the next morning he woke up and he was the size of a horse. He had shrunk down. He was very, what is happening? When he went to sleep the next day, he shrunk down the size of a cow. And he began to shrink down and down until he was a large goat. And then he became like the size of a large dog. And then eventually he shrunk down to the size he is today, which is like a large cat. Now, the problem with being the size of a large cat and not being the size of a woolly mammoth is that now you have predators. And being such a gentle soul, he had no way to protect himself. And Chola Homa, he was ready. He waited behind every rock. He waited outside of Kony's house. He did everything he could. If, if Kony got out, Chola Homa was there within minutes. And he spent his time chasing Kony all day long. Kony began to get skinny. and He couldn't eat. He couldn't sleep. And he was terrified of this red fox. And he didn't know what to do. And word began to spread amongst the animals that medicine had been done. So Kony went into the village, the first village where Chola Homa had visited with the people. And he found the medicine person and he said to them, 
did you do medicine? What has happened to me? I am tiny. I am, I am defenseless. I, I don't know what to do. And the medicine person took pity on him and he said, no, this is not me. I told him that he could not change gifts. I told him that this was a bad idea. And Skunk said, well, put me back. I want to be big. I want to be Ishtu. I want you to put me back. And the medicine man shook his head and he said, I'm so sorry. I, I can't. There's no way that I can put you back. And he sat and he thought for a while and he said, you know, I can't put you back. But maybe I can give you something different, maybe better. So he got a medicine bag, a small pouch that he made. And he began to put different things inside the bag, secret things, things that he knew about, herbs and, and, and root and different things that other people weren't aware of. And he tied this bag up and he put it around Skunk's neck and he told him, never take this off. If you wear this, Joy Lahoma will leave you alone. But the minute you take it off, you will be vulnerable. So Kony entered into his new life wearing this little sack around his neck, and he was pretty happy. For some reason, Cholahoma kind of kept a distance, didn't know what was going on. Cholahoma had heard he had been to the village. There was a little bit of fear building up. And Kony began to eat, gather food. He began to have a little life again. But the bag would often get caught in shrubbery or a bush. And he would be tied to the bush and he would have to kind of figure out how to get out of it. And he'd have to take it off. And he decided, well, I'll tie it to my front leg. And as he walked, it would get stuck on a stick or caught on a stone. And he tried the other leg and he tried his back legs and he tied it around his waist. But no matter what he did, this bag just, it got in the way. Finally, one night while he was sitting in his home, he thought, what am I going to do? The bag makes me miserable. If I don't have the bag, I'm a target. I, ah, what am I going to do? And then it came to him. He had this huge, fluffy tail, a monstrously fluffy, puffy tail. And he took that bag and he tied it right up underneath the base of that tail. And he wrapped that cord around really tight and he kept it. And you couldn't even see the bag. It was tied so close to his body and the hair protected it. He thought, I've figured it out. And the next day he left his home and he walked down to his favorite berry patch and he began to eat. And right as he began to eat, Cholahoma, who had been watching, noticed there was no sack. There was no protection, no medicine on this, on this skunk. And as he looked up over the bush, and Skunk made eye contact with him, and he made eye contact with Skunk. Cholahoma went to leap. Skunk turned, and as he turned, the medicine was released. And if you've ever been around Skunk, you know what the medicine is. Cholahoma's eyes begin to burn, and he ran away, and he learned he could not steal another gift. And Corny finally had a gift that would protect him. Protect him the smell, and that came from a medicine person. Do you have skunks in Marrakesh? I don't think there's any skunks in Marrakesh. <laughs> it's like I'm not sure if skunks are really a regional thing. They, I, I think they're a North American thing. We have two-legged <laughs> skunks in Washington, D.C., it's called Congress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a nice name. <laughs> Corny is actually a very, maybe even, I don't know, that may be an insult to Corny to this poor skunk. <laughs> my apologies to the skunks. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's my story about Corny. Um, there's a story that um, I'm going to tell, and it was told, the first time I ever heard it told was by Gail Ross. And you've had Gail on the show many times. And I actually contacted her last uh, a couple of days ago because when I was thinking about gifts and about, uh, you know, how people don't recognize their gifts and the things about gifts, um, this is one of the favorite. I don't hear her tell it very often. She doesn't tell it very often, but it's one of my favorites. And I actually contacted her and said, would you mind if I told your story? Um, because also I just, I so adore Gail. I'd like to 
honor her. And she gave me permission to share with you the story of the metal lark. Um, so it's uh, told, I guess, as a Cherokee tale, um, but being Southeastern people, perhaps I can, I can share it. Um, so when all the creatures got their gifts, one creature was very sad and, and not happy. And she wouldn't interact with the other creatures. She kind of hid and kept to herself. And this was Metalark. Metalark was just miserable. Didn't feel like she had a gift. And the only thing she felt like she had were huge feet. She thought her feet were just too big. And when she was around the other creatures and she looked at them and, and each bird had a beautiful eye. Uh, plumage they had you know cardinals were red and bluebirds were blue and certain birds had songs and and Osi, the eagle could fly the highest and hawk had vision and all of the different creatures not even just the birds but regular creatures had amazing amazing gifts and she just didn't feel like she had one and the only thing she was stuck with is she thought her feet were just too big and she was miserable and she kind of hid herself in grasses and she stayed close to the ground. And, and eventually one day she bumped into Hatafo. Now Hatafo was the grasshopper. And as the grasshopper hopped along, he bumped into Metalark hiding in the grass. And he said, what are you doing? And Metalark said, nothing. And he said, no, no, why, why, why are you not? Waka, you should fly. Why, why are you? What are you doing on the ground, hiding in the grass? She said, nothing. He said, no, no, no. Hatafo, mali, grasshoppers jump. Foshi, waka, birds fly. You can't be on the ground. This is not right. And she explained to him, she said, no, I, I don't fly. And, and I don't, I don't want to be seen because of my feet. Now, Hatafo hopped all around her feet. And he said, there's nothing wrong with your feet. She said, no, no, they're way too big. They're just awful. I don't like my feet. They're terrible. And I don't want anyone to see them. So I stay on the ground. I don't fly. I don't get into trees. I don't want anybody to see these awful, awful big feet. And Hatafo shook his head. He, oh, Foshiwaka, birds fly. Hatafo mali, grasshoppers jump. You have to have to do something else. She can't hide. But she wouldn't listen to him. And Grasshopper would come daily on his route as he went about his business. And he would bump into Metal Ark as she hid in the reeds. And he would call her out and he'd say, why are you still on the ground? Foshi waka. Foshi waka. Birds fly. But she wouldn't. She was very sad and very just, you know, couldn't focus on anything besides the fact that she thought her feet were too big. Now, Hatafel, he was busy. He was constantly hopping around and he was kind of into everybody's business. And one day he heard cries. And he looked around and he followed the cries to the edge of a cornfield. The native people had, had their cornfields and it was coming time for the corn to be harvested or collected. And he heard the cries of a bird. And the bird was running around the edge of the cornfield and she was crying and, and she was screaming and it was quail. And he hopped up to mother quail and he said, what's wrong? What's going on? And she said, I, I, I made a mistake. I built a nest in the cornfield and the people, the hot talk, they're coming and they're, and they're cutting down the corn and they're, they're, they're just going to destroy my nest. They're going to step on my babies. They're going to crush the eggs. And Atafo looked at her and he, and he followed her to the nest and he, he, he tried to help her roll the eggs, but they just couldn't manage it. And that's when Hatafo said, oh. and he ran back as fast as he could, hopping along the way to where he found Metalark hiding in the reeds, head down. He explained to her that there was a problem, that Mother Quail was in danger, her babies were in danger, and that Metalark could help. How, what, what, what can I do? She said, well, I have no gift. And he said, you have big feet. And Metalark began to follow Hatafo. And she made her way across the ground following the little jumping grasshopper. And when she got to Quail's nest, she lifted her body up with her wings and used her feet to snatch up one of the small eggs. And she flew it a safe distance into a field and put it down gently. And she came back and forth carrying Mother Quail's eggs 
until she had pulled them all away from the field that was being harvested. And at that point, Grasshopper and Quail applauded her and thanked her and told her how wonderful it was that she had such big feet. What a gift, for they had not had the strength. And at that point, she became so excited about her gift not being something terrible, but being something wonderful, that she flew into the sky. And as she flew into the sky, her joy burst forth from her in a song. And she realized that that, too, was her gift. She had one of the most beautiful songs in the world, as well as larger feet. And that is how Metalark discovered that gifts aren't always what you think they are. And most of the times, they're better than what you expect. Thank you, Gail. Do you like that, Lewis? <laughs> I like how he likes it. He's so excited. I like that, Lewis. So um, that is a gift that wasn't expected. Um, let's see. I think I'll tell you about a gift that um, the women needed, that e-hole women needed, and they asked for it. Now, Chikasha people, all native people, or most native people, I can't speak for. You froze, Naomi, you'll be back. And just think her last story quelled my concerns about the internet. Thank you. <laughs> I know that was bad. She she will, talking about. She will, she will be back. It's always better to lose it at the beginning of a story. You can go back to yeah. the beginning. You, you've got egg on your face after that joke, Baba. <laughs> I acknowledge that one. I shall remember uh, that. We've, we've we've, oh, hold on, everyone. We've lost Amy altogether. Oh, uh, we, Ali, we, can you be, keep an eye out for her when she tries to get back in? Would you like a little story about a Highland cow while you're waiting? <laughs> yes. Sounds yes. Nice. Yes. Let's have a, let's have a story, a, a Highland cow story while we're waiting. All right. Okay. Hamish, the Highland cow, was at home and he was being very, very annoying to his mother. And his mum mom says, oh, Hamish, if you stop, don't stop behaving yourself, you'll get put out. Well, Hamish was delighted because he wanted outside and he knew exactly how to push his mother's buttons. And he took his horns right along the radiator. That was it. His mother hit the roof, threw him out of the cottage and said, you get outside into that field. And don't you dare leave it. Hamish went away, started munching away at the grass. Munched away and got a wee bit of down the end of the bottom of the field and saw the gate was open and wheaked his horns into it and opened the gate and he was away down the road. Around the corner, up the hill, round the corner and he saw the most luscious bit of grass that you have ever, ever seen at the other side of a fence. And he stuck his head in through the fence and he started munching away at the grass. Num, 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 num. No, oh, num, 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 until he was stop it, full of grass. He'd hit his pull and he gangs to pull his head out of the fence and he was stuck. And he tried again and he was definitely stuck. And like all boys do when they get into trouble, they shout for their moms. Mom! I'm stuck! Now, if Hamish had stayed in the field by the cottage, his mom would maybe have heard him. But he hadn't. He'd gone out the field and down through the gate and along the road and up the hill and round the corner and gone into far he saw that luscious bit of grass. And he was still stuck. So he hauled his head and he hauled his hull. Oh, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. And along comes a donkey. Oh, Hamish Maloon, but the noise you're making, I heard you for miles away. Put an ass wrong with you, I'm stuck. I can't get my head out. Well, just calm down. 
I'll grab hold of your tail and I'll pull you and we'll see if we can get you out. So Donkey grabs hold of Hamish's tail and he pulls him and he pulls and he pulls and he pulls. I'm still stuck, it's not working. Well, we'll try again. We'll just do that. There's another pattern of feet coming along the road. And here's a sheep. What on earth is wrong with you, Hamish? I heard you for miles away. I'm stuck. I can see you're stuck, but do you hate to make so much noise? I'm stuck. Well, well, we'll give you a hand. So the donkey grabs hold of the Hamish's tail, and the sheep grabs hold of the donkey's tail, and they pull, and they pull, and they pull. But still, I'm stuck. I'm still stuck. You need help, and goes Hamish. Just calm down. I know that's a part of a lot of wee feet. And then along comes the collie dog. And the collie dog goes, Hamish, I heard you from miles away, but and that's wrong with you, loon. I'm stuck. I can see you're stuck, but don't worry, we'll help you. The donkey grabs had of Hamish's tail, and the sheep grabs had of the donkey's tail, and the collie dog grabs had of the sheep's tail, and they howl, and they howl, and they howl, and they better than howl. I'm still stuck. Mom, I'm still stuck. Well, just with that, there's a little wee squeak. And along comes a moose. And the moose goes, oh, come on, I'll give you a hand. I can't exactly if it's wrong, because I'm a wise moose. Hamish has seen a bit of green grass, and he's gone into it, and he's got his head stuck, and you've been pulling it, the donkey and the, and the sheep and the collie dog, and you hadn't managed to get a moose. Well, I'll help you, and we'll get a moose, and they bore that. Well, the donkey laughed. And nothing you didn't be able to do. And the sheep laughed, and the collie dog laughed, and even Hamish gave the moose a funny kind of look and goes, Oh, well, but I'm stuck, you may as well try. So, donkey grabs her of Hamish's tail, and sheep grabs her of donkey's tail, collie dog grabs her of sheep's tail, and the moose grabs her uh, the collie dog's tail. And they pull, and they pull, and they pull, and out pops Hamish's head. Oh, oh, that's fine. Mom, thanks for tea. There you go. A little filler for you. <laughs> Thank you for that, Phil. Now, uh, Ali, are you there? Unmute yourself, please, Ali. Ali, Ali, but Amy's waiting to get back in. Ali. Can everyone unmute and shout Ali as loud as they can? One, two, Ali oh, as loud Ali, as you can. Ali, 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 what what kind of day have you had? Brilliant day. Oh, today. what what made it brilliant? I don't know. Okay, but it was <laughs> just you're brilliant. Here with us, it was just brilliant. It's been insane. Fantastic. Hey, Louis, what part of the country are you in? Stamford. Stamford. Right. Oh yes. All right. Like the American knows where that is, but okay. <laughs> yes. It's in the you flat. Know. It's in the flatlands, the fenlands. Sometimes you guys make me feel like the little kid in the room. Oh. I mean, <laughs> seriously, because, you know, America, we're very isolated. And that's partly geographically and partly uh, the way our society is set up. I mean, our nearest, I mean, we have Canada and we have Mexico, but we think of it as, the world is being in America. And in many ways it is. But I listen to you guys and I hear your references. And I'm going, okay, now I got to look that up. Now I got to look that up. Now I got to look that up. I said, Louis knows more about this than I do. Now I got to look this up. <laughs> I'm not complaining. I found it amazing. And um, as I say, my life is anything but boring. I'm always learning new things, especially on this platform. Well, well, Bubba, there's there's something that I think Louis might know about that you may not know about. To Louis, tonight, will you be watching the England football game? 
Yes, I am. Come on, England. Go on, England. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. What football game was that you mentioned? Was that not the Scotland oh. football game? Oh, yes. Oh, sorry, Phil. Yes. Yes. Scotland. You, I knew you were going to come back with that, Phil. <laughs> Louis, Louis, I'm not even don't, going don't, to... don't mention to Phil that England are going to really beat Scotland tonight. Ah! No, no, no. I'm not even getting it. I'm so disappointed. I'm not even getting into this whole football (laughs) thing. Uh, Because what you guys call football, what Americans call football, what the Australians call football, those are different footballs altogether. Um, Yeah, but that's why I said I'm not getting into it. I'm not getting into that arena. But whoever enjoys sports. Now, tonight in America, we'll be enjoying uh, an early Juneteenth celebration on one of the national stations. And Juneteenth is when, after the Civil War, there were still many pockets of slavery in America. And around June the 19th, uh, they sent martial forces into Texas to free the last of the slaves. So my Independence Day is Juneteenth, June 19th. Ah. So that is actually tomorrow. And Congress just passed it as a national holiday. No, about time. Oh, they don't want us to oh, slavery, it. but it's a national holiday. So what is the day called, Baba? What do you it's call it? It's called Juneteenth. Juneteenth. Juneteenth, and it's June 19th. Uh, however, because it was just passed and because the 19th falls on a Saturday, the federal celebration will, is today. If it falls on a Sunday, the, fellows, the, the federal celebration oh. will be on a Monday. But it's called Juneteenth, and it's after the Civil War was officially over, there were still months, some people say years, before the last of the slaves were officially freed. Wow. And that is called Juneteenth. And to me, that is my Independence Day. Oh, oh happy Independence yeah. Day. Yes, right. Ha- yeah. Happy so we have that Day. coming up. And also this weekend, we have Father's Day coming up in America. And um, uh, I, I, there are a lot of youngsters that claim me as their dad. And I find that an <laughs> honor. No, no, no. I mean that. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, I just heard Not that. The same. <laughs> no, there are a lot. There are a lot that claim me as their father figure. They actually call me dad, but and and I embrace that because to touch someone's life in a positive way is an awesome thing, yeah. and I'm always humbled. And uh, so, anyhow, so I have Juneteenth. I have uh, Father's Day coming up. I'm I, I'm so excited. You know, I just I can't just, hide it. <laughs> right. okay, we're we're going to give we're going to give Ali one more shout. What? Do you... yeah. One, oh. two, three. Ali, oh, Ali, 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 Ali. We need you to let Amy back in. Ali. I, I bet he stepped away for a spot of tea. Yeah. Now, well, he's supposed to stay there. He's like, you're supposed to be there all the time, Ali, when case of disasters or make me host. Just that maybe I am. Maybe maybe I'll just go no. to participants and no, no, Ali is oh. still host. So we, we have Father's Day this Sunday, Bubba, in England. That's what that's what we have this Sunday right. as well. Oh yeah. dear. Hold Did, on. Is it is it in Scotland too, Phil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's well, a UK. Oh, right, <laughs> World Storytelling oh. Cafe. Where are oh, you back, Amy? Marvellous. Okay, we can all Yay, thank, you. thank you, Ali. Thank you, Ali. Uh, <laughs> Amy, welcome back. Have you another story for us? Here we go. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that was. Just all of a sudden it was like we're gone. So all right. So I guess I should uh, should finish up here. Um So the women owned everything and the women also had to do all of the farming. So they were constantly growing the corn, the beans, the squash, anything that um, the people needed, their families needed. They rendered fat from bear. They tanned hides for clothing. So it was really, you know, a 24 hour a day, nonstop job. And, And the women, it was hard. Uh, now, the men helped. They went and hunted and they did things and gathered things. But for the most part, you know, women were alone a lot and they worked to their fingers to the bone, literally. So <clears throat> um, when the women started having problems was with the children. 
Now the children, the women would get busy and they would be out in the fields or they would be tanning hides together and working, trying to put things together. And the children would get bored and bored children get into trouble. So the bored children would wander off. They would wander off and they would go out into the woods and they would, um, you know, they would get lost or they would get hungry and they would get into a fight or they would get stuck in a tree or one would fall and skin their elbow and they would begin to cry, mama, mama, mama. And the mothers would have to run and stop what they were doing and they would gather up the children and they would bring the children back and they would say, you stop that. You sit over here. Don't fight with your sister. Eat something. They would do. So they were constantly throughout the day being interrupted. They were interrupted and, and just it made life very even harder than it was. So as this went on, the women began to think, what could they do? And they cried out to Abba Banili and they said, Abba Banili, creator, can you help us? Please help us. They said, you know, the, the children are busy and, they, and they, they get bored and they run off and it stops us and, and we need help. And, and so creator thought about it and he, he looked at the workload and he looked at how the women worked and he said, e, yes, I will help you. And he looked at all of his creation. And he came to corn and he asked corn, he said, could you help the women? Could you help the mothers? And corn was so excited that creator had chosen her. She was like, yes, of course. And she, she worked and thought about it and she began to shed her leaves and all of the corn husk fell away and she shaped up a woman. Now this woman was tall and thin and beautiful. And she went from village to village calling Minti, Minti, Tushba, Tushba. And the children came from all over and they were so excited. And she took them to play games and they, they had Hitla, they danced and they Toloa sang. She taught them to play Chunky. She took them all over. They played hide and seek, basically. They did all the things that children do. She did it to keep them busy. And they loved her and she loved them. Now, this all went well until she went to the Oka, to the water. And when she got to the water, she took the children swimming. She sat down and she looked at herself in the water and she began to go, oh, I am gorgeous. I am beautiful. She couldn't believe how beautiful she was. So she sat and she watched herself in the water. And pretty soon as the children came back out, she said, Banili, Banili, sit, sit with me. Look, did you guys know I was this great? I'm gorgeous. And she began to ask the children to tell her, tell me, tell me, you're so beautiful. The children were like, you're so beautiful. No, no, tell me, you're so beautiful. And she would make the children say, you're so beautiful. And she sat by the water and she wouldn't leave. She no longer wanted to play. She no longer wanted to sing. There was nothing that she wanted to do. And so she, of course, didn't attend to the children and the children got bored and bored children get into trouble and they begin to wander off into the woods again and they begin to do things they shouldn't and they begin to cry out to their mothers and the mothers heard them and thought what is going on and they had to stop and the mothers went out into the woods and they gather up the children and they pull them back and they say why are you doing this stop come sit don't do come the whole day and things went right back to how it had been and finally, the mothers called out to Abba Banili one more time. They said, creator, why? Why is this happening? What is she doing? She's no help. So creator came down and he spoke to the cornstalk woman. And he said, why are you doing this? You have to understand it is not about this. This will fade. It is about this. It's how you are with your people, with the children with your family, with the ones who love you and with who you love. Don't, don't focus on this. And she said she understood. And she, she walked away from the water and she called the children, Minty Tushpa, come quick, Minty, Minty, come. And the children returned to her and they began to play. And they had all of the fun they had had before. And she cared for them and she fed them and took them on adventures until one day she decided to take them swimming again. And when they went back to the Oka, when they went back to the Misa Sapokni, she looked into the water and she thought, man, I am just, I'm so good looking. 
I mean, who knew? I just, I am gorgeous. And she began to watch herself in the water again. She began, oh, oh my goodness. And she made the children sit and tell her how beautiful she was. Until eventually the kids were like, this is uh, bored children get into trouble. And they wandered away again and went off and got into the fields and the forest and the trees and things they shouldn't. And the mothers could hear their cries and the mothers had to stop. And they had to go and find the children and they would drag the children back. And again, they were right back to square one. They were doing it exactly as it had always been done and they couldn't get their work done. And they cried out to Abba Banini. So what is good? Why? Why is this happening? Why is she doing this? And Abba Banili told them, he assured the women that he would take her. And he watched her as she sat by the water and he realized that she didn't get it. And he would not speak to her about it again. So he went to Katini. He went to the great horned owl. And he said to horned owl, you need to help me teach her. And the horned owl watched her for a while. And then they knew what to do. The horned owl spread its silent wings and leapt off its perch and it swept over the water. And when it got right above her reflection with its talons, it snatched her reflection and it flew away. And she sat looking at the water and seeing nothing. And when she saw nothing, all of the features on her face began to go flat. She lost all of the beauty that she had obsessed over. She began to shrink down, and eventually, she was this size, and she would have no worries about beauty, and the children could keep her with them all the time, and she would keep them occupied, and that is how the corn husk woman came to be. <laughs> now, what an amazing joke. <laughs> I, that one was for you. And we I mean, have, not a joke, amazing story. I'm sorry. The joke was right. amazing. The story was. We, we've, had, we've had corn dollies over here for hundreds of years as well. So <laughs> those corn dollies sort of exist all over the world then. Well, you find with so, tribal people, you know, it, it, what amazes me is that people are so the same. Yeah. Everybody needs to entertain a kid. You have to be able to, mothers and fathers still have to do what they have to do every day whether it's farming in a field or, or getting work done on a Zoom meeting. And so you find a way to entertain. And if you have plants, you make a, a you dog. Make a, you make a dog, yeah. And you know, the, the interesting thing for me being a, a Chickasaw person, when I was a child and I went to school, um, they, you know, we did this unit on the pioneers and the settlers and, and the colonizers, basically. And, and they said, oh, you know, they made these dolls. And so I came home from school and I had this little doll I'd made. And I was like, mom, 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 you are not going to believe this. The pioneers made these dolls and this is the coolest thing ever. And so, and my mother stopped me and said, who made corn? And of course, as a child, you're like made corn. What are you talking about? Nobody made. And she said, no, no. Corn was developed by native people from grasses. We made corn. We made it into the plant that people eat today. And she said, if we made it, those are our dolls. And as the pioneers came across, we taught them how to entertain their children. She said, so those are yours. And that's when she told me the story of the corn husk doll, of the corn husk woman. So a lot of history gets changed, but it's- It gets, it gets twisted around like words do. Yeah. You know, because, yes. I mean, corn- Corn means something totally different here. It's just any, it could be wheat, could be barley, could be oats, yeah. just any, any of the grains mixed together, they're just corn. Uh, well, I found when we lived overseas that like a lot of times corn was just animal feed, like it was considered animal feed in certain countries. They, they had no idea about sweet corn, like eating sweet corn on the cob when I was a child. Now that may have changed now, of course, it's been a few years, but when we, when we were a kid and we moved overseas, a lot of the countries we lived in were like, you eat that. Why would you, why would you eat that? <laughs> that is yeah. So, so Louis, what do you make? Louis, what do you make? Hi, Ding Dong. What do you make? 
Do you make models at all? I rather don't know, but I just made them Lego. You make so. things out of Lego. Excellent. Excellent. That is, so, that's Le Lego is 21st century corn dollars. <laughs> oh, God. That's a, brilliant. Hey, Louis, I have a godson that made the Millennium Falcon out of Legos. He's 40 something and he's still building with Legos. Yay. Yeah, you, you, never grow, you never grow out of Lego. No. People can do that. And, and, and Amy, uh, First Nation people and my people share so much in common because we've both been allies, friends, and adversaries at the same time. Yeah. But yeah. I remember learning things in school and they're teaching me like this is something someone else gave to my community. But I'm like, no, we gave it to your community. Yeah. Have you, know? have you seen that? Have you seen that new documentary, High on the Hog? Um, no. Watch well, that. I, I ha I, okay. Well, oh, 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 Amy, you weren't here. You weren't here. But please, tonight, I think it's on uh, ABC. Please watch the special on Juneteenth and I think Fox. Yeah. I think it's tonight. Yeah. So I just. Okay. Yeah, I okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but no, we, we don't want to lose. We don't. We don't. We don't want to lose Louis. Oh no, we we have an adult I, conversation. I'm, okay, okay. But <laughs> I think I mean I figure we're out. We're about out of time. You know, it's twelve fifty-seven. Yeah, no, it's great. It's great. It's great. It's been a great program. But uh, just uh, but we can right, carry on Louis's talking program. for as long as we like. But for right now, uh, let's give Amy. Bruton Blumel, let's get the names the right way round this time. Uh, uh, a big round of applause. Thanks, Amy. Bill for filling in. Yay, Amy. Uh, uh, Baba C for the history lesson. And Amy <laughs> for the history lesson as well. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, uh, Ali especially for going out and refueling the magic carpet because obviously the magic carpets ran out of fuel tonight sometime but he got it refueled because Ali always gets it back and John, <laughs> John and don't forget the hand across the border to Phil in Scotland and we whatever the outcome is tonight in that football match we will remain friends won't we Phil of course we will. I hope, I, hope, I, hope you, I hope you remember that when we win 2-1. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Louis, Louis who's, 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 who's going to win tonight, Louis? England! Oh. <laughs> oh. That really sounds to, worse than they, the Washington football team and the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, this this is a that worse is a rival that, than that. This yeah, it's bigger than forward. it's bigger than that, Baba. <laughs> <laughs> One thing you have to remember: when the Scots went into battle, they were called the Fighting Ladies from Hell. Yep. Whoa. Now, when I lived in Scotland, if you went to a football match, uh, they did they still sing "Here We Go"? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they would just it's, sing that for like over and over and over. Do you, do you, know, do you know the song, um, uh, Yes, Sir, I Can Boogie? Yes. Uh, yeah, right. that, that, that is Scotland. She did say boogie. Boogie. boogie, boogie, as in yes, dance. Sir, yes, I can sir, boogie. I can boogie. That, that is a Scottish long. song for this for, for this this football team. That's the that's their crying call. So everybody's yeah. got everybody I can boogie everywhere in Scotland just now. It's not terrifying enough, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's been it's been football. a great evening. I I just you know I I just 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 so much information coming from both Amy and Bubba C tonight. It's been great. Uh, Louis, did you enjoy tonight? Yes, I have a lot of stories. Thank you, Amy. Well, thank you, and I'm gonna, I'll teach you how to say thank you in Chickasaw. Can you say chokmashki? Chokmashki. Chokmashki. That means thank you. So I say chokmashki to all of you for having me back. Chokmashki. When the Chickasaw people leave, we don't say goodbye. We don't have a goodbye. So um, we say uh, chapisa la cho. So tapisa is to see. And if I say chapisa la cho, it literally means I will see you. So it's almost like a promise. So chapisa la cho. So before we jump into the show, uh, that we're uh, the, the coming up on, and you're all welcome to join on Sunday, same time, 
when we have our worldwide story round, which is a story round from and we have people from all over the world on that. It's a totally open mic, so you just turn up, you don't book in. Um, Mike Rust, uh, <laughs> you know, you know that you know I'm an anarchist. So, and, uh, we don't, I don't, I don't do organisation. <laughs> and uh, there's um. <laughs> and uh, and then Tuesday, uh, uh, Monday, of course, is Doctor, which I'm really looking forward to. Another old friend from Texas, Doctor Kathleen Hudson. Um, I'm I'm interviewing her, and that, that she's an extraordinary woman. Used to be a used to be a uh, a rodeo barrel racer. Um, oh and, wow! And uh, and, um, and she's an author, and she's Doctor of Literature, and the most extraordinary woman. And Tuesday, uh, my favourite night of the week, because it's our under 12, our under 18 to 18 and under tellers, our young international tellers, children from all over the world. So worse, if you ever you're doing nothing on 11 o'clock for you in the morning, uh, Amy, just come in live and watch these wonderful young people, what people from India, from Gaza, from Nigeria, from America, everywhere, just and Scotland, of course. I, 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 if I forget Scotland, a fist will come out from the oh, from no, no, no. Square, <laughs> and uh, the um, these wonderful children from all over the world that tell these fantastic stories. Um, and it, it's worth jumping on just live, just to see them and just to encourage them. Um, and Friday. Friday for our children's stories next week, Louis. We've got three, three uh, tellers from India. Uh, one of them is Yasnami's mum, Aman. Yes. So yeah, Yasnami's sort of making her mum do some work for a change. And uh, rather than us listening to her daughter continuously, so just one of those fantastically talented families. So... And there's stuff going on all the time. And keep up to date with the festival. Keep looking at the at the site to keep up to date with the festival. But to see, I've got to talk to you about the weather. You, we've got to get you across to Morocco. Yes. In February. Yes. You might have to oh, pay. Oh, hey, John. I yeah. used to have a shirt from Morocco that was given to me as a gift. It had 100 buttons. Well, maybe 40. And it's back in my and I used to unbutton and button them all whenever I wanted to wear the shirt. It took me two months to realize just undo the top five <laughs> and slide it over my head. Why? And I yeah. have one question to ask you, John. When Ali is having trouble fueling the magic carpet, does that mean the carpet is threadbare? Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> king of the king of the pun. <laughs> Amy, <laughs> Amy, <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, just just stay just stay in touch, just stay in touch because you were brilliant tonight. So well, thank thanks you very you. much. And uh, and what remind me because I my short term memory is completely shot. What is goodbye in Chickasaw? You don't uh, have goodbye. Salacho, chapisa, lacho. Chapisa la Chor. So tonight, Chapisa la Chor. Chapisa la Chor. La Chor. <laughs> yeah, 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 look, la Chor. Thank you. Thanks very much. Amy and Swahili, yeah. we say uh, tutu a nana baka nana, which means until the next time. Yeah, yeah. I suppose yeah. a lot of indigenous people just don't have the. There was no. not a. It was no concept of just Our being. people share so much. I'm, you and I have got to stay in contact. Google yeah, well, me. I'm hoping, you're in D.C., right? Yes, yes, yes. And yeah, if you come I'm, to D.C., you have family. Well, I'm hoping I'm hoping that this December, I was in D.C. two Decembers ago at the Smithsonian as one of their artists for the Christmas um, right. do. So I'm hoping if I can get juried in again, um, that we can go again, because D.C. is a town that, we need, I needed more than the week to, I mean, we re, you really need to, so I would love to meet up and I would love to, meet up. anybody comes to Austin, you have right. And I can show you parts of DC you won't see on the official trail, but nonetheless fascinating. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, sounds great. Sounds great. All right. So from one Thanks friend, to from Henry. one Rafiki to another. 
Pratiki means friend in Swahili. Exactly. In okay, Kana, John. I know you. John wants me to be quiet. So. <laughs> no, 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 Baba. See, have I ever asked you to be quiet? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not in those exact words, but <laughs> John's got many yeah. ways of saying be quiet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Louie, you're after my heart. <laughs> yes. I Fair love God. Louie. Uh, Louie. Best reaction. He's like, oh yeah, that's how. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Louie. I like Louie. He speaks from the heart. Yeah. Oh, that was amazing. I'm not, I am not Louise. I'm not, I'm not Louise. Oh, I'm sorry. Louise. I mispronounced it. Did I mispronounce uh, it? It's Louie, right? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just Louis, but I'm not Louis. I'm not from Louis. So it's still okay. the S and end of my name. So, so Louis. you prefer Louie. Okay. So, so Louis, my yeah. middle name is Louis. And spelt the oh. other way, spelt the other way. And my dad's name was Louis, the same way you spell yours. That was my father's name, Louis. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's, okay. it's a small world with a with the name. It's a lovely, I love the name Louis or Louis. It's a lovely name. Hey, yeah. Amy. Me too. Yeah, good. Uh, I'm glad you... you like it, Louis. <laughs> oh, we got a pun coming. I can feel I feel a pun coming. <laughs> no, no, no. This is just to Amy because I really want us to stay in contact. If you Google my name, Baba C, put storyteller after it, a whole lot of good things will come up. If they're not good oh. things, they're not me. But I want us to stay in contact. But like John, my short-term memory is 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 shot. Like John, yeah. my short-term term memory is did i just say it? it's shot so <laughs> if you would reach out i would appreciate it and my and my yeah. email address i'm about to put in the chat now but okay we just ah oh, it's like i'm i'm talking to a sister from another culture yeah you know yeah and i i love hearing all the uk voices because when we lived in scotland that's one of my favorite places and we went all out. we were constantly going into england or scotland didn't get into wales and ireland but uh traveled i mean every time i had a free weekend we were going i was somewhere yeah. i was like oh, we'll go to york okay well let's come back let's go <laughs> Glasgow. let's go to you know linlithgow let's we were constantly moving through that area and the voice so you were so sur- you were a service family weren't you yeah, well my yeah, my father was a he was a civilian. He were, but he ran on the basis like anything the guys did for fun. You know, if they went to the movies or the golf course or the arts and crafts or the bars or the gymnasiums, that's what my dad did. So he was a civilian on a military base. But yeah, so and, and we always lived, my father was also very adamant that we always lived on the economy with the with the natives. You know, he was like, "There's no point in being here to live in Little America on a base." you know, if you're here, you live with, with the locals. So, you know, we lived with the Turks and the Germans and we lived, you know, you know, with the, with the Scots basically, you know, and, and, and I really appreciate, now I really appreciate it because it makes you so much more aware that, that, you know, people who live in tiny town, Texas, their whole life, there's nothing but tiny town, Texas. <laughs> you know, it, there's no big world. And so, you know, to be exposed. And my father, you know, he was like a history buff. So every week we were going somewhere, France, Germany, Belgium, you know, he's like, we're going to the Blitzkrieg line. We're going to a castle, <laughs> to a graveyard. I can't tell you how many graveyards I've tripped through, you know, that kind of, <laughs> I really enjoy culture and hearing your voices. I'm like, oh, I want to go back. Oh well, you know, well, what, 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 what I, I, what I need to do is set up the world storytelling traveling circus of storytellers, <laughs> and we yeah. just pick up, you know, <laughs> we just, we just, we just get a big bus, fill it with Ooh. about thirty storytellers, and just travel. And we can, well. we can yeah. broadcast it over closed circus television. Closed. Oh, circus. No, I knew that. What? We couldn't get to the end without another I, one. I, I'll only come if we've got a mute button for Bubba. That because when I need to when I need to sleep, I'll need to press that. Most of the time it'd be all right. But, but when I need to sleep, I need to sleep. So I'd need that mute button. That's funny. <laughs> That's why I'm learning sign. <laughs> it's all right. You've been on a campsite with me, Shane, so yeah, yeah. you can survive. Hey Bubba. David, David Thompson. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Hi, David. Welcome to the uh, after party. Hi, David. 
You got, got it right hello, in the end. Just, just to say hello. Hey, Baba, man, how, you, how are you? Have you met Baden, Baba? Oh, have I met Baden? <laughs> yeah. It was Baden that introduced Baba to me. Ah, uh, yes. okay. And, and and John has never forgiven him for that. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Baden and, and I are going to have words. Baden and I didn't... carry on like uh, oh, brothers. Um, yeah, I spend, we, we, I've spent have... quite a bit of time with Baden sort of storytelling, and and yeah, I love I love he's... we love being around each other because we yes, we tease yes. each other all the time. Yeah. Merciless, I, I Amy Baden 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 is a uh, is a storyteller from uh, well he's he's in London but he's from Antigua and from the West Indies uh, from the Caribbean originally. So nice. um, we have shirt uh, competitions with it. We try and outdo each other with with pretty flashy shirts. <laughs> uh, he likes to have rap competitions with me. He hasn't yes. won yet, but um, the, the I keep encouraging. The one favorite phrases, like if someone's walking by, they'll, they'll say to you, they'll literally say, sit down and lie with me. And they mean to tell lies. You know, yeah. they're like, oh, <laughs> yes, and, sit and, down and, and lie and, with and, me. Among <laughs> African Americans, we have lying contests, which means storytelling. <laughs> that's so outrageous yeah. that it possibly could be true. <laughs> but chicken sauce love all that kind of oh, stuff. Oh, oh, on, a, on, a, on a historical note, Mark Twain had a nervous breakdown and he came to England to recover. And yeah. one of the places where he where, where he stayed was a pub called The Ship at Brandon Bridge in the middle of the fence, not too far from mm -hmm. Louis, actually, at the Louis end of the country. And it's um and he he they used to have line contests there. So mm -hmm. I had I, I I managed to get the local tourist board to pay me to run a uh, a, a lying contest in in this pub a sort of Mark Twain remembrance thing. Oh, fantastic! And, uh, and there's in there's a book called The Stories of the Fend, which was written sort of in the sixties, but it's by an old boy who's writing about the Fens at the beginning of the century. And there's a story in that about a character called Chaffa Leg. Who used to, in in the story, because <coughs> the, the guy who wrote the book was just a, a kid who sat in the corner of the pub, you know, just meeting all these characters, yeah, and uh, so Chaffaleg apparently used to dig up these things from the fens and put them in his shed, and the Cambridge for professors from Cambridge University would uh, would come in and. Uh, and, and buy them off him, and he was surprised when he saw them in a glass cases when he went down to Cambridge University to teach ice skating to the ladies. Now, I was in, I told that story, and this guy came up to me who was a counselor from uh, Kings Lynn, Kings Lynn, that's not too far from Louis either, uh, Kings Lynn Council, and he, he was the sort of, uh, uh, you know, culture geezer. And uh, he said, my dad knew Chaffa Leg, and uh, he used to get the local blacksmith to make up all these artifacts. <laughs> and he only stopped when the people <laughs> from Cambridge University asked him to stop polishing <laughs> them up before they gave them to him. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Well, on that must... note, on that note, yeah. uh, we, we're like a party. We never like to leave, do we, Louis? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, well, Who would want to leave Louis? I mean, yeah, absolutely. well, you know, we're having a good time, but we oh, are going to. He's his laugh is just like it he, is. It is. Yes, yes. Friday, Friday nights is Louis night. Louis night. Uh, 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 Ali, we're going to have to let you get some rest. Right. So the rest of you enjoy your evening. The Americans yeah. are going to enjoy lunch. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. I, I used to feel guilty about that. I don't anymore. I think I'm going to order pizza. <laughs> well, yeah. Could you send some across the Atlantic to me? Yes, but I can't promise that it will reach you before it gets eaten. Uh, uh. The damn seagulls, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Blame it on the seagulls. Yes. Now I will tell you. Years ago, the first time we moved overseas, the military sends these packers to do your house, and we'd never dealt. My parents had never dealt with professional packers, and if it's in your house, it gets packed. 
And so oh, no. <laughs> they packed our dirty breakfast dishes, <laughs> packed a full trash can full of like food and <laughs> and then they put it on a boat and it takes about three months to oh, get no. and by the time it gets to your home i don't recommend shipping pizza or any food <laughs> that it's a very bad idea my mother was like what happened whoa and then we you know realized it was a trash can in the breakfast dishes so <laughs> uh, thank you for having me so nice to meet you louis i hope i see you again I Bye. hope so too. All right, Bye, David. Bye. We've had both David Thompsons on tonight. What a night. Bubba C, Shane, Amy. Bye, Ali. Thank you very much. I'm going. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks Amy. Thank you, Amy. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Ali. Thanks, Ali. Bye. 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 Later, 229 Bakahanani. Until the next time. See you soon, Bubba. See you soon, Bubba. That's a bet. Thank you, Shane. Thanks, everybody. Bye, Louis. Bye, David. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Bye, Louis. Bye, Shane. Bye, Pussy. Hey, Louis. <laughs> Enjoy um, your weekend. Are you watching the football tonight? No. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not a football. I know that. I'm I'm not into football, American or otherwise. Oh, okay. okay I, no, okay. I like I like martial arts, swimming, and um, oops, I think they are about to disconnect us. But we'll pick this up next conversation, okay? Oh, I All right, Bye. love you, Louis. Talk to you.